Hey, hey, I'm back in the roundabout in Kempville because it's a beautiful day. Uh, so I'm just going to follow up on um, our sort of talk about uh, trying to stay present and be a little more mindful and just basically taking a little bit more control over life uh, and coming slowly to the realization that you are in fact life. That life isn't happening to you, but you're actually it. You are life itself. And the way to control life is uh, by staying in control of your thoughts and how you interpret the world around you and what's coming uh, into your life. And then you have the control as to how to decipher all of that information and action and people and events and all that stuff, right? It's, that's you, that's your part, that's your role in this. And to uh, be as peaceful minded as possible uh, when you're trying to evaluate what's going on in your world is the ultimate goal because if you approach things with a more peaceful mind, then you're gonna be even more uh, peaceful in your outcome and more contentment and joy will come to you as opposed to tension and stress and angst and worry. So I've asked you to kind of track uh, your present moment actions. So like literally say to yourself, I am putting hands on a steering wheel. I am driving my car. I am picking up this cup to drink water from. I am now walking to the door. I am now walking my dog. I am now uh, talking to so-and-so on the phone, like have a background kind of um, logging of what's going on in your present moment. I'm now looking at this beautiful tree. I am now petting this lovely dog. You know, like actually be so crazy aware of your actions in the present moment. And then you're going to distract your mind from thinking about thoughts of the, well, thinking about thoughts, actually creating thoughts about the past or the future or even angst about the present moment, even though there really isn't such a thing as angst in the present moment. It's just your thoughts that are creating the angst. But this way you are stopping those things from happening because you're too focused and too involved on um, tracking what you're doing in the actual moment itself. Okay, so that was step one. Step two was using that awesome brain of yours to be super creative and start uh, fantasizing a little bit about what ifs and, uh, but with a positive spin. Because our what ifs usually have a bit of a doom and gloom feel to them. You know, what if this happens? What if this happens? What if, ah, uh, you know? But what if, you know? But I can't because this might happen or, you know, or this happened before and it's gonna happen again. You know, we're very uh, hardwired to look for trouble. And it's up to us to retrain the brain and start um, looking for or actually conjuring up more positive, uh, lightened feelings and thoughts. So, you know, and I mean like make shit up. Like really, make shit up. I don't know where in the book of life it says that you reach a certain age and you can no longer start fantasizing or making stuff up and using your imagination. Jesus, I mean, we were so good at that as kids and then all of a sudden you can't do it anymore. That doesn't make sense to me. So I am suggesting that you really use your imagination to give yourself just a little bit of a boost, a little bit of hope, a little bit of, hey, wouldn't it be cool if this happened? So, and I'm not saying that the bad shit that's going on in your life or has gone on in your life didn't exist. It's not like I'm, I'm not saying you made these events up, but I am saying that the story that continues in your mind about these events are you, that's you making it up. And it's kind of like when we were teenagers and I'm going to date myself here because of the song I'm going to choose, but you know, like you would have like a, um, a breakup, right? Like a heartbreak. And you would just play Sinead O'Connor over and over again, you know? Nothing compares to you. And you'd fucking feel it. And you'd be bawling your eyes out, right? And you just like replay the pain over and over again. You know, you would, oh my God, nothing compared, you know? Like you just constantly pull on your heartstrings because the drama of it all. And we do that still. Um, and not, I don't, you know, I'm not making fun of any um, situation that might be difficult for you, but I'm just saying that, you know, 
when is it going to stop and how are you going to stop it? Because living in that constant state of despair is not serving you. It's not taking that situation away. It's not taking the pain away. It's not making you live your life in a more peaceful setting. So it's up to you to change that story. And I'm telling you, you fucking can. Okay, you can. You can change the story by just inserting the odd hopeful thought. It doesn't have to be euphoric, but it can be a little bit hopeful. So like I said in the previous video, it's like you've painted this picture and you just want to add a little bit of a sun in the top corner. So adding a few better thoughts into that just elevate your vibe just slightly for now. And then the more you do it, the higher and higher the vibration will get, the better the thoughts will get, and the less shitty your situation will seem, honestly. Okay, and I'm, again, I'm not, I'm not dismissing the shit. We've all been through a lot of shit and we still continue to go through a lot of shit. But to stay in it is serving you nothing, nothing at all. So that was uh, the second video. This one now is uh, to train you to change a couple of, well, today just one word, okay? When you say that something is hard, I want you to stop yourself, recognize that you just said hard, and then insert the word challenging instead. So life is hard will be turned to life is challenging. This soul work, spiritual awakening, becoming more aware, more present is fucking hard. No, it's fucking challenging. Uh, my changing of the flat tire the other day wasn't hard, it was challenging. And what's the difference? Well, the difference is feel. So if I were to say to you something is really fucking hard, it's got kind of a low, defeatist, Oh, it's just not gonna happen kind of feel to it. But if I say that something is really fucking challenging, it kind of lifts it up a little bit. It lifts up the experience just a tiny bit that there's hope, you know, that and more, not excitement, but a little more spirited feel to it. You know, a little more action oriented, a little more, uh, oh, maybe I can do this. So like I said, like hope. Hope. Hard is pushing down, challenging is rising up. So when you catch yourself saying this is too hard, or this is so hard, or this is fucking hard, or oh, it's hard, I want you to change it and insert challenging instead. And I want you to feel the difference of that slight change of wording in your thoughts, or if you're saying it to somebody, oh, this is really hard, man. You're gonna say, oh, this is really challenging, man. And I want you to feel the difference between those two words, okay? So catch yourself saying hard, and then insert challenging. Like actually cut yourself off and put challenging in there instead, okay? Okay, okay. Okay, I think that's it for now. All right, um, so yeah, hopefully uh, the next one will be a, a beautiful day again and I'll be able to sit in this little roundabout once more. I did have a car kind of stop and wonder what the fuck I'm doing and I thought maybe he was gonna come and give me shit, but um, he didn't. He just pulled over and now and then he left, so everything's fine for now. <laughs> All right, guys, go and um, find things challenging, <laughs> not hard. Okay, you got this. Talk to you soon.